Hi there, in this lesson we're going to look at a very popular data structure called the stack. Now so far you've seen arrays, right? And they can be also thought of as a, a very granular structure for handling a collection of things. And most programming languages support this ability to handle a list of things. And that's what really what, it, what the array gives you. Uh, but it's, it has its limitations. It's not very dynamic. Um, now we can build on top of the array to create more useful, higher level data structures. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this lesson, as well as the upcoming uh, data structure lessons. Let's first talk about the data structure referred to as the stack. A stack is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically a bunch of things piled up on top of each other. For example, when I receive letters in the mail, I usually place the envelopes on my desk or in my mail basket. And over a few days, a tower of envelopes is built up. And when it gets high enough, um, I'm forced to find the time to start going through the mail. Uh, now, most people usually start from the first envelope, top of the stack, and work their way down opening each letter one by one and taking some kind of action, such as paying the bill or discarding junk mail. This tower of things is an example of a stack. Right? The important point about this data structure is that the item that was last inserted or, or placed into the stack is the first one to be removed. Okay, So old mail typically gets buried down at the bottom of the stack. Right, Most people just sort of put things on top of it and uh, basically take it back from the top. All right, At least that's what I do when I check my mail. And this kind of a workflow has a specific name, and it's called LIFO, which stands for last in, first out. All right, This last in, first out kind of scenario is useful in many programming situations. And the stack data structure facilitates this last in, first out kind of behavior. When we place an item on the top of the stack, it's called pushing it. Right? Removing uh, it from the top of the stack is called popping it. So push and pop are the primary operations that can be performed using the, the stack data structure. And we'll be implementing these as we code up the stack. So let's start by first creating a package. Um, and I will call this package ds, whoops, ds.stack. Okay, ds just is short for data structure, and we're going to be specifically looking at the stack here. So hit finish, and we can create a class. We'll call it stack. Now we'll first need to define a few variables. Okay, private int max size. And this variable will store the size of the stack. The next variable um, will say it's of type long, and it will be an array. All right, and this uh, is actually going to be the container, uh, which will store the list of items. So it's going to be a list of items that are of type long. The next thing we need is going to be the top variable. Okay, and this variable is, is very important. It will represent the index position of the last item uh, that was placed on top of the stack. Now, the stack will need to be initialized uh, with some size. Uh, so we need a constructor to initialize the data structure uh, with the correct number of slots needed. Okay, and this will essentially initialize our, our stack array. And it will accept a variable of type int. And we'll just say that uh, the max size is going to be the size that's passed into this. And the array, uh, the stack array, will be initialized with this size. And then finally, we need to initialize the top variable. And since uh, in an array, everything starts from the zeroth index, um, I don't want to give top the value of zero because guess what there's nothing on the top right now so we'll just say it's initialized to negative one until further notice until we actually start placing items into the stack so the first item that gets placed into the stack uh, will be at the zeroth index of the array and uh, we will then increment uh, negative one to be zero all right so um, this again this variable is very important it will represent the index position of the last item that's been placed on the stack. Now let's uh, define our first method, 
And remember, this stack is supposed to support push and pop operations. Push is putting things on top of the stack. So it will be, it won't need to return anything. It will just be used to put things on the stack. And it will be accepting a value of type long. And in here, since this is going to be a new item to be placed on the stack, we'll say top is incremented, right? And we will assign stack array with that index position with the value that was passed in here, okay? Next, we can define the pop method. And uh, this, for convenience, will return the data. So when we pop something off, when we remove something from the stack, uh, when we invoke this method, this pop method, we sort of just want it to return that item that we popped. All right, that's why it will return data type of long. And we first need to make a copy of the current top index position. I'll show you what that, what that means here. I'll say, I'll define a new variable called old top, and we'll give it the current index position of the item that's on top of the stack. And then we'll reduce the index number because we have removed that item from top of the stack. And this will just return the stack array with the index position of the item that we basically intend on removing, which was the, the top of the stack. So that's why I actually stored this old top into a variable here. Now, an important thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we're not actually removing things from the array. We're just using these pointers, all right, that point to different index values. And we have an array that uh, has certain data, and uh, we basically point to different cells using variables like top to maintain the value that is uh, supposed to be considered the top value on the stack. In reality, the the cells that are in the array are being overwritten with new data. And when we uh, use the pop method, the pointer, the top variable, is going to reduce by one. So it's going to point to a cell whose index value is one less. And when we push things on the array, it's going to point to a cell in the array whose index value is one more, right? So keep that in mind. The top is a very important variable, and it's being used uh, as a pointer uh, to reference certain cells in the array. In reality, we're not really removing uh, something from the array. We're, we're just using this pointer to point to different cells and overwriting those values. Finally, let's actually define a few more methods. Um, there's a method called peak. You'll see that in most stack implementations. And that will just uh, return the item that is uh, currently sitting on top of the stack, just for ease of viewing um, by any, any client that uses our data structure. They can just sort of peek on the top and see what's the last item that was placed on top of it. And this will just return the stack array at the top index position. And while we're at it, let's uh, define some more handy methods. Uh, we'll define a method called isEmpty, and this will, of course, return a Boolean, true or false, to represent whether the stack is empty or not. And we can just sort of return the value of, you know, of whether top is equal to negative 1. Because, of course, if there is nothing in this stack, top will be a negative 1. Okay, that's how we initialize it here. And then finally, we can have one more method, and this will also return of type boolean, and we can say is full. And this will just return whether max size minus one is equal to top. Okay, now can you think of why we need to subtract minus one here? Remember, top represents the index position of the uh, item that's on top of the stack. And max size was just something we were uh, we passed to the stack constructor to sort of create it. So we initialized the stack array with that many slots. But that doesn't necessarily mean that last index position for this stack array is going to be equal to max size. It's, of course, going to be max size minus 1. Remember, uh, everything in an array starts from 0. 
and goes up to the, the length of the array minus 1. Okay, so that is why we have to check for max size minus 1 is equal to top. And that's pretty much it. This is our stack data structure completed. All right. Now, this is a simple Im implementation. If you were to read uh, some Java code, um, some stacks that are native to Java libraries, there would be uh, probably a lot more code um, to carry out other functions that, that are not supported here. But this is the general idea. Okay. Now, let's test this out. I'm going to create a new class called app. And this will have the public static void main method in there. So hit finish. And in here, we can test out the stack structure that we created. So we'll say um, the stack is equal to new stack. And we'll initialize it with a value of 10. All right, we need to provide the max size for this stack. Then we could just start pushing things onto this. We'll say the stack dot push, uh, and we'll put in a 20. And let me just copy this. 40, 60, and 80. Now let's print the contents of the stack, and we can just use a while loop. While not the stack is empty, right? We can use this method to check whether the stack is empty or not. While the stack is not empty, we can get the value, say value, from the stack. And we can say pop. All right, so I'll just basically remove whatever um, is on top of the stack. We'll assign it to value, and we'll just print it out. Now let's hit the play button. And notice that it printed out the items. Now, I want you to pay attention here. Um, why do you think 80 is the first item that was uh, printed here. Well, of course, the reason for that is because we are placing items on top of the stack. We first put 20, then we add 40, then we add 60, and, that, and then we add 80. So the old numbers sort of get uh, piled on top of, and uh, 80 is the most recent item that we placed on top of the stack. And that's why when we pop it, that's the first item that's displayed here and then 60, and then 40, and then 20. And that is a very important feature of the stack, and I'll show you shortly why that could be helpful. This last in, first out type of behavior is actually very useful in uh, a lot of programming problems. Now, this stack is not 100% safe. It could throw exceptions during runtime of the application. Let's say we initialize the stack to be uh, 10, like we did here, but we insert 11 elements in it we'll run into the array out of bounds exception, right? So for now, I've left this up to the user of the class to know how many things uh, they expect the stack to have because they're, the user of this stack is the one that will initialize it with a particular uh, number of slots required. But could you, let's take this as an assignment, could you make this class a more safe data structure so that if a user tries to uh, place more elements than are allowed, it should prevent the program from crashing. All right, so take this as an assignment and try this out on your own. And once you've uh, completed it, you can resume to see my solution. All right, so hopefully you took the time to make this stack more safe. The way we can do this is back in the stack class, we can utilize this is empty method and is full method to make sure that we don't go beyond the boundaries of the array. So when we're pushing things onto the stack, we can do this. If is full, all right, we can just uh, print out, or you can throw an exception. I'll just make it simple and say um, this stack is already full. And uh, else, and only in the else clause, do we advance the top variable and uh, place something on top of the stack, okay? So if it's full, these operations will not happen. It'll just sort of print to the screen that the stack is already full. And in the case of pop, if the user tries to pop too many items off the stack, more than there actually are, that can also create problems.
So we can do a similar type of thing where I, I can say if is empty, then it would just print out the stack is already empty. And in the else clause, we can dump this code here. Um, and by the way, this method actually returns something, okay? So in the case that it is empty, it's only going to print something out. We actually need something to be returned here. So we can just say return negative 1, just to indicate to the user that uh, there's nothing on this stack. Now, of course, this is a very simple way of handling this, and this could actually be looked at as bad code because when you pop something off the stack, you expect some value, and if that's negative 1, uh, there's a possibility that uh, somebody actually placed the value negative one onto on into the array, um, and uh, we don't want those confusions. So that's why we have this little. The stack is already empty, and hopefully, if the user sees this and then they see this, they can understand that, yeah, there's nothing on this stack. Okay, but you can uh, have better implementations for this by throwing exceptions. And a lot of times, most of the data structures out there that have been developed in the Java libraries throw very useful exception. So let's test this out. I'm going to make this only three slots, and we're going to try to insert uh, after 60. It should not push. It should not be able to push 80. So let's hit the play button, and notice that it says that this stack is already full, and that is why uh, only 60, 40, and 20 are are pushed. Now, because of this last in, first out nature of the stack, it helps solve certain kinds of problems. Can you think of the kinds of problems um, using a stack could solve? I'll give you another quick assignment to test your knowledge on this. Um, why don't you create a method that reverses a word's spelling, and you have to use the stack data structure that we've created. So if someone calls your method passing in the word, for example, hello, uh, it should return O-L-L-E-H, basically hello spelled backwards, right? And let me get you started by creating the method signature here. And we'll just create the method right here in the app class. It's going to be a static method. It's going to return a string. And it's, of course, going to be called reverse string. All right, that's exactly what this method does. For now, I'll just, just so that it compiles, I'll just return whatever's passed in here. Your job, of course, is to reverse the string that was passed in here and return it. And you want to use the stack data structure. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we created a stack of type longs. Okay, So the data structure in the stack class that maintains that list is this array that's supposed to store a bunch of longs. Uh, well, you want to change this to store a bunch of characters. Okay, So let me actually do that for you right here. And I'm going to change this to actually also be a car. And instead of pushing longs, we're going to be pushing cars. <laughs> All right? um, and this is supposed to return a car data type, not the long. Okay, And in, uh, now that uh, it's going to return car. We need to change this return value, you know, just just a zero or something like that. And uh, the peak, it's of course going to return a car. And everything else is just about fine. Okay. So there you go. You set this up. So back in the app class, write the algorithm that reverses the string that's passed in using the stack data structure. And of course, up here, these, these things are not going to compile, but don't worry about that for now. Um, you can just sort of, co let's comment this stuff out right here. Okay, so give it a shot, and I will see you when you resume.